Uh, welcome to the continuing winemaking series here at the Wine of the Month Club. And wow, what a pleasure to have all the way from Beaujolais, France, uh, um, Cyril Chirus. That's it. C'est bon? C'est bon. <laughs> Merci. Uh, boy, what an opportunity to taste some wonderful, wonderful wines from Chateau de Jacques because, well, I'm going out that way in a couple of months, so we really excited to swing up from Lyon and maybe check things out. So how long have you been doing this at Chateau uh, de Jacques, and um, what's your background? Tell me about your history of winemaking. Uh, I am the winemaker in Chateau de Jacques uh, since uh, 10 years now. 10 years, wow. I began in Beaujolais in 06. Uh, I basically studied the uh, analogy, uh, winemaking and wine growing in the south of France. Uh, I am not at all from Beaujolais, but uh, <laughs> I'm convinced that is uh, uh, very interesting things to do there. Yes. Uh, Beaujolais uh, had a very successful time in its history. Uh, nowadays, it's sometimes a bit more complicated, but uh, we are very happy to uh, to be a part of that new uh, Beaujolais history. So the, the winemaking, you, know, you studied at a university down the, in yeah, the south of France, yeah. and then you were in Montpellier, I think we discussed that a little bit. And I, that, what were you doing there? Uh, I studied uh, both uh, winemaking and wine growing. Uh, so this was a three years uh, study. Uh, but this was mainly uh, courses. Uh, that means that, uh, sure, my first years in Beaujolais were really useful to yeah. see clearly what was the wine growing, yes. I mean pruning and all this stuff, and the wine making, uh, and um, my real first uh, wine making as a winemaker uh, was uh, 07 in Chateau de Jacques. Wow, well, that's great. So, and you were drawn up to Beaujolais, like, like you were in the south, you're already doing things there, but you just thought Beaujolais was interesting and the opportunity came to you and you thought I'm going to exactly. move up. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, I, I thought about traveling uh, in 06. I remember that traveling to Chile. Yes. And I had that great opportunity to come in, uh, in Beaujolais. Uh, people around me considered that it was a bit crazy because, as you know, Beaujolais uh, is not always considered as the most uh, high end uh, wine yes, French region. That's true. And, uh, and uh, I took that opportunity, and I'm very happy to, uh, to be uh, in Beaujolais uh, since that time. Well, we're going to come see you because we, I'm on this uh, voyage, voyage, a gastronomique, voyage gastronomique. I want to find some foods in the uh, Burgundy area that uh, separate it from the rest. Because I, I think it's interesting about wines and food and how the districts have evolved and the wines have evolved and the cuisine has evolved at the same time. We don't have that in America. California is, you know, is, we don't have indigenous foods, we don't have indigenous grapes, we don't have indigenous wine. And I want to see the stuff. In, this, in, in France. So tell me about this Alagote because I could have sworn it was Chardonnay. This is the only exception of our tasting, which will be a Chateau de Jacques tasting. This is uh, ah, Louis Jadot. Louis Jadot, Domaine Gaget, yeah. because um, Chateau de Jacques is a part of Maison Louis Jadot, has been purchased in 1996. And this Bouzeron is a part uh, of Maison Louis Jadot as well. And I thought it was interesting to let you discover that wine before the Chateau de Jacques wine, because with that range, you discover probably the most uh, unknown grape of Burgundy. Yes. Aligoté yeah. there and Gamay there. Bouzeron is very interesting because it's the only village all around Burgundy that is dedicated to Aligoté. Yeah, that is interesting. Uh, and this is uh, interesting because we have a philosophy there for the Bouzeron, for the winemaking, I mean, which is quite original. Often Bouzeron and Aligoté uh, mainly are made in a very fruity way. We like to uh, use a winemaking that is close to the one we use for the Chardonnay grape. That means that that particular Aligoté was vinified uh, in old French oak barrels. Wow. Okay. So. We, you were talking about the DNA a little bit about the grapes and Chardonnay. It's possible that you think that some of the DNA from Alagote was that one of the grapes we were talking about? Yeah, was, uh, yeah. In fact, all the um, grapes you will find in, uh, in Burgundy are connected. And the father of all the grapes is the Pinot Noir. Yeah. Pinot Noir plus the Gouet Blanc gave 
aligoté, chardonnay and gamay oh, as well. Okay, right. That means that gamay, aligoté and chardonnay are like brother yes. or sisters. Uh-huh. I get it. That's interesting. Okay, so no wonder I, I, I was a little confused when I tasted the wine because it, it's got all the expression of a Chardonnay, but it, it, so is it the only district in, in, in Burgundy that is committed to Aligoté? No, you, you, anywhere? You, you know that uh, you, you will find easily yeah. some Aligoté in Burgundy, but often in the regional level, Bourgogne Aligoté, mm-hmm. in a, mm-hmm. often in a quite fruity, easy to drink, and uh, very fresh and crispy way. Our um, philosophy about Aligoté is to show that Aligoté can be very serious on that particular village mm-hmm. because Bouzeron is probably the, the best terroir, the best marriage for the Aligoté grape. Um, and what is interesting as well is that you are tasting now a 2013 vintage. We never associate Aligoté with aging, but you're tasting a five years old Aligoté, which is, as you can see, you would very fresh. That. Yeah, it's very fresh. And it was very expressive and very elegant, actually, considering that it has enough acid to carry it through all these years. But I've never guessed that it's a 13. Green apples, the color is amazing, too. I love this sort of chartreuse. That simply show you that Aligoté uh, is a very interesting and serious grape. Uh, if you let it express itself on its best terroir yes. with a very classical winemaking because the winemaking and the aging we use for that particular one is exactly the same uh, we the same we use for the the best single vineyards of Chardonnay. <coughs> wow it's gorgeous thank you for sharing that because I just think it's really fun and I don't didn't know the story behind the Aligoté and I don't think we tasted that last time Monsieur Matthew was in when we had the Bougeron. All right, so now we're going to move to the Beaujolais. Uh, I didn't speak about uh, geography, but just for you to have an idea, Bouzeron is right in the middle of Burgundy, the entire Burgundy. That means it's in the Côte Chalonnaise area. Um, And next to Givry, next to Ruy. And we are going now to the far south of Burgundy, in a region that often people uh, don't associate, uh, doesn't associate to... um, to the Burgundy, this is the Beaujolais. Uh, this as is I Morgon. said, and this de is Morgon 2014. As I said, Maison Louis Jadot has always been very involved in the Beaujolais area, probably since the end of the 19th century. Um, but the first time when uh, Jadot had access to vineyards was 1996. This is a good example of what is our idea about Gamay. Uh, this is a gamay that we produce quite in the same way than the Pinot Noir from the Côte de Nuit and the Côte de Beaune. That means a long skin contact, at least three mm-hmm. weeks, with an aging partly in oak and partly in tech. So I'm starting to, after these wines have been opened for now mm-hmm. about half an hour, really starting to see the terroir in these, in these wines. So how different from what we start with to the end of is the terroir of, the, of Beaujolais. What, what will make the Beaujolais different uh, to Burgundy is uh, the single vineyard, the terroir, because uh, you know that Burgundy is uh, often limestone and clay. Beaujolais is volcanic, yes. only volcanic, because we are in the east uh, of the Massif Central, which is that very old mountain in the middle of France. Mm-hmm. Beaujolais is the rest of that old volcanic activity. And what will make the difference within the Cru Beaujolais will be the nature of that volcanic stone. Mm-hmm. You can have uh, a classical um, rest of r- uh, outside volcanic activity, which gave granite, pure pink granite. That will be typical of Fleury, Moulin Avant, and the main part of the Cru Beaujolais. And sometimes you have the rest of a submarine volcanic activity, which gave blue stone like schist, the real name is diorite. Diorite, right. And this is typical of Morgon in the Côte du Pie, Côte de Brouille, and Juliana. And that will explain to you why these three areas are totally different than the other. And this is as complex a Morgon I've had. And the more it sits in the glass, the more interesting it gets. Yeah. Is that typical of that area and the vintage? 
Uh, this is typical of that area and that cru, uh, which often needs sometimes to be totally open. Right. This is probably, we often say that Moulin Avant is the lord of the, or the king of the cru oh, in Beaujolais. I'm convinced that Morgon has the same potential. And often in Chateau des Jacques, Morgon needs a bit more time to be as open as the Fleury or Moulin Avant. We'll be right back in just a minute. 